Welcome back from the ad break and let's continue with our lesson. So we are going to be moving on to the second point of our concept map and that is from table presentation to formulas. Now, we are given the following table. Now this table has input values and it has output values. But remember now, if we connect it to our number patterns or our numeric patterns, we know that the output values are going to give us a certain pattern. So we are going to see how we move from the first output value to the second output value, and again from the second output value to the third output value. So let's look there, from nine to the 10, we can see that we are adding one. From the 10 to the 11, we are adding one, and from the 11 to the 12, we are adding one. The same thing with from the 12 to the 13, we are adding one. Now, how can we present this in a formula? Or what is the rule that is applying here? We can see that, firstly, we are adding one every time. So we are going to take that one that we are adding, and we are going to multiply it by our input value. In the first one there, it is a one. Now we know that from this product, we need to add or subtract a certain value so that our answer is that first output value there. So one multiplied by one is um, one. And then how do we get to the nine? We are going to add eight. Let's do the same thing for the second one. We are taking one because that's the number that we are adding every time. And we are going to multiply it with our input value, which is the two. And we know that after we add or subtract something, our answer is supposed to be the 10. So one multiplied by two is two. And what we add or subtract to two so that we can get 10. Yes, we are going to add our eight. So we can see that the number that we are adding is the same for our first value and our second value. So what will our rule be in this instance? If you are thinking of n multiplied by one and we add eight, then you are absolutely correct. That means it will just be n plus eight. And that is our formula for the, uh, these output values that are represented here. Let's move over to the next one. So the next one there, as our output values, we have three, and we have eight, 13, 18, and 23. Now from three to eight, what are we doing there? We are adding a five. And from eight to 13, we are again adding a five. So how are we going to come up with our formula? We know that we are going to use the five, and we are going to multiply it by the position and we know that we need to add or subtract something so that we get to our first term. So let's start with the first one and check. So we are going to say five multiplied by the first position or the first input, which is one. And we are going to add or subtract so that we get to the three. So what are we adding or subtracting there? If you are thinking of a plus, sorry, if you are thinking of a minus two, then you are Correct. So what would be the rule for this representation? It would be 5n minus 2, and that is our rule. And just to check if you are correct, if you say now 5 multiplied by 5, which is now that input there, and we subtract 2, our answer is supposed to be 23. And 5 multiplied by 5 is 25. When we subtract 2, that is going to be our 23. It means our rule there, we are absolutely correct when we say 5n minus 2. What about the third one there? We are going to look at what we are doing to move to the next number. So from negative 5 to negative 3, we are adding 2. And from negative 3 to negative 1, we are adding 2. So that means that we are going to take the input, multiply it by 2, and what are we going to add or subtract so that the answer gives us a negative 5? So 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. And how do we get to negative 5? Yes, we are going to subtract a 7. So that means our rule is going to be 2 multiplied by n or multiplied by the input. And we are going to subtract 7. And that is our rule for this representation. Let's look at this one as well, where we have one and one third, one and two thirds, then we have two, which is the same as one and three 
thirds or one plus three thirds, which is actually equals to two. And that pattern continues. So what are we adding here each time to get to the next number? We are adding one third. So from the second one to the third one, again, we are adding one third. So it means that our rule is going to be that one third multiplied by the position, in this case multiplied by one, and what we add or subtract so that we can get to one and um, one third, we are going to add one. That means our rule is going to be one third multiplied by the input and we add one and that is going to be our rule for this pattern. So that is how we move from table representation to a formula representation. Let's move over now to our last point, which is from equations or formulas to representations on a Cartesian plane. Let's look at how we are going to achieve that. Before we can represent our equation on a Cartesian plane, we need to look at ordered pairs. Now, in order for us to write down a point or an ordered pair, we need to remember the coordinates are written in this form. The form there is input and output. So the input comes first and then the output comes next. In this case, it's going to be our x and our y. So our x is going to be our input value and our y is going to be our output value. So given the following equation, fill in the table below. So we are given a table and we are going to fill in this table uh, according to the formula that we have been given. We can see that the input values are in the position of the x, so we are going to substitute that x so that we can get that um, table filled out. So the first one there, if we say negative 3, multiplied by the first input value which is negative 3 and we add 2, we can see that the answer there is going to give us an 11 because negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 is a positive 9 and when we add 2 that is going to give us a positive 11. So that first input value there is an 11. We are going to do the same for each of those values and when we fill out our table there we can see that when our input value is negative 2 our output value is going to be a positive 8. When our input value is a negative 1 our output value is going to be a 5. And then when we go over to the 0, that is three negative 3 multiplied by 0. And when we add 2, our output value is going to be a 2. When we um, place the 1 as our input value, we are going to have an output value of negative 1. And that last input value there is going to give us an output value of negative 4. Now, how do we use these values to now come up with our Cartesian plane. Firstly, we need the ordered pairs. Again, remember our ordered pairs are represented as X and Y. Our ordered pairs are represented as X and Y. So the first ordered pair would be the negative three and the 11. The second ordered pair would be the negative two and the eight. And the third ordered pair would be the negative one and the five and so on with the other pairs that would be the 0 and the 2. And the next ordered pair is the 1 and the negative 1. And then finally we have the 2 and the negative 4. So those are ordered pairs, inputs and outputs. And initially I think I said there that is the first input value, that 11 is actually the first output value. That was my mistake there. So we have there the input values and the output values and we have our ordered pairs. So let's use these ordered pairs to sketch our Cartesian plane quickly. So let's go over to the next one where I've already filled out the table and the ordered pairs are already written there. So each ordered pair I've given an alphabet so that we can see how we are going to take these ordered pairs and put them on our Cartesian plane. So our Cartesian plane is um, the vertical is our y-axis and the horizontal is our x-axis. So our y-axis and our x-axis, they need values there. So we are just going to place in those values quickly so that we are able to work on our Cartesian plane nicely. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And the same thing on the negative side of 
our x-axis, we are going to have our negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. And going up as well uh, on the y-axis, we are going to have our 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And also going down, when we go down, we are on the negative values. So we are going to have our negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. And of course, those numbers can continue, but these are the numbers that we are going to need so far. In the middle, we are at 0, 0. So let's look at our ordered pairs. The first one there is A, which is a negative 2 for our X and a negative 5 for our Y. So we will go to the negative 2 first, and then we will move down to the negative 5, and we are going to place our point there, and that is our point A. We're going to do the same thing for b, that is negative 1 and negative 3. So negative 1 for the x value, and we are going to move down to negative 3, and we are going to have a dot there, that is our b point. Let's look at c, that is a 0 and a negative 1. So 0 is right there in the middle, then we move down to negative 1, that is our c. And then we are going to go to d, which is 1 and 1. So 1 for the x value, 1 for the y value, and we are going to put our point D there. And then E is going to be 2 and a 3. So from 2 on the X values, we move up to Y on the Y values, to 3, sorry, on the Y values, and that is going to be our point E. And lastly, we are going to have our point F, which is our 3 on the X values, and we are going to move up to 5 on the Y values, and we are going to place our point F there. So as soon as I've play, placed all my ordered pairs there, you are going to use a ruler and you are going to connect all of these dots. Now, I don't, I don't have a ruler where I am, but hopefully you are going to have a ruler. These dots are supposed to now connect to one straight line as it is on our Cartesian plane. And that is now our equation represented on a Cartesian Plane. And of course, if those points continue, then it means our line will continue as well. That was a wonderful lesson on functions and relationships. I really hope you did enjoy it. I know I did. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you next time. Goodbye.